Matthew 15. I'll, I'll, I'm going to get you out of here. Give me a half hour to 45 minutes. And really, I'm not going to, to preach through. I'm going to do probably like doing Bible study, okay? Uh, if I start getting happy, I get happy. But, I, but my goal is because I've been reading this scripture here and never understood this scripture at all, Bob. It, it had me puzzled. Matthew 15, 21. Mm-hmm. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now for your written word. Lord, I pray, God, as we dissect this word today, Lord, I pray, God, that you give us insight, revelation, and understanding of what the scripture is saying to us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord God, a now word, Lord, that we may be changed, Lord God, but also not be changed, but I'll be able to apply this word to our everyday life. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. All right. Today's Amen. topic of today's message is Come on. Come on. What happened? Oh, I got it. Okay. It's faith moves God. Somebody say faith, faith. Moves, God. moves God. See, last week we talked about faith under pressure. But today I'm going to talk about faith that moves God, Sue. Uh, you, 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 so many times you, we, 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 we try to move God by our, our energy, by our excitement, by our crying sometimes. But you, faith moves God. Amen? If you want to move God, move in faith. Hey, I, 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 I need, to, I need, phrases, I need to, to let you know here, Jesus, when Jesus applauds someone to, okay, uh, for great faith, it should, we should take notice of this. Because does anybody know how many times Jesus commended somebody or applauded somebody for great faith in the Bible? Does anybody know how many times he did that? Huh? Two times in the whole Bible that Jesus applauded somebody for using great faith. It was this woman here, but also the centurion man. Huh? Only two times that the Lord applauded somebody for having great faith. And one thing about it, Cecile, what I'm learning is they were Gentiles. Huh? These people here were, were considered outcasts. But Jesus, two times in the Bible, says, wow, what great faith. I don't know about you, but you, I would like the Lord would say that about you and I. Wow, what great faith. Here we find out here that th th this scripture here is very difficult to understand because Jesus' apparent attitude towards this woman. Because the woman who was not just the only woman, but she's a woman who had a desperate need. Jesus was both silent, but also he is both direct. Look at the scripture here. Jesus was really, he, did not, he was really not nice to this woman as we consider nice. Uh, because why, if Jesus, if, if somebody treated you this way, you, you would get mad at them and tell them what you really thought about them. Hello, church. Huh? Here we find out Jesus, this woman, Tyrant, she had a desperate need. Her daughter was severely possessed by a demon. Huh? Hey, have you ever seen somebody who was possessed by a demon? Huh? Uh, being possessed by a demon, well, I'm telling you, you, you don't know what's going to come out of them. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. If you're not in the anointing, that demon will overtake you. That, 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 that spirit will, will beat you up one side and down another. Some of us live with a demon. Some of us work beside a demon. Huh? Come on, Elder. 
Are you hearing me here? But one thing I'm about is, Jesus, this woman here, Peggy, she had a desperate need, and her daughter was severely possessed by a demon. Hmm. And she comes to Jesus and asks him for help. And think about it, Mark Gray. Jesus, he did not say a word, but also he said something to her that to us well, we, we will be offended by. Who's he think he is? Call me a dog. I don't know how we think we're so religious that, see, everybody thinks, see, everybody talks about, oh, how sweet Jesus is. Huh? Oh, Jesus, Jesus never did get mean. Let me tell you something. Jesus, Jesus was a bad man. Because what Jesus, he did some premeditated stuff. I told him in Bible study, y'all remember in Bible study, that Jesus premeditated when, when, when he was going to the temple, he premeditated, he went home, he went, he, he built the whip to go in there and destroy that temple. Huh? He didn't buy it. He didn't pick it up off the ground. He made that because he knew the next day I'm going to lay them boys out when I get back to the temple. Huh? Jesus wasn't always nice sometimes, church. Not always. See, think about it is what we have, uh, we have made Jesus seem so nice so, so much that we forget that God, he's a God of wrath too. Come on, church. And, and, and sometimes, but this one, this one really perturbs me, uh, Sister Terry is that people think serving Christ is weak. Why is that? Because while we as a church, we have watered Christ down so much that it takes a weak person to serve him. Huh? Because everybody who, who, who has bad luck, everything who's falling apart, just come to Jesus. Huh? So, so the world looks at Jesus just for those who have trouble in their life. The, the, the things of, who sickness in their body, just go to Jesus. He's for the weak people. Come on, that's how we as a church have portrayed him. And guess what? You act weak too. But the thing about it is, you guess what? You got to realize, you understand the Bible. The Bible says that when you are weak, he is strong. Okay? You may be meek, but not weak. Don't get it twisted, church. You may be meek. You better be meek, but you are not weak. Amen? There's a difference between meekness and weakness. See? And most people will try to use your meekness as your weakness. But don't get it twisted, brother or sister, huh? Uh, I still got a dark side to me. Huh? Look, number one, she truly loved another person, her own daughter. Huh. What I want you to do, I really want you to, to on the B part of that, A, she loved her so deeply that she considered her daughter's problem her own. Look at that. She... She, she considered the problem her own. She didn't say, Jim, have mercy on my daughter. And she said, have mercy on me. See, when we pray, Angie, we got to pray. See, we pray different when we're sick than somebody else is sick. When we're sick, we're more earnestly praying than we're praying for somebody else. Because if somebody else is sick, we may forget to pray for them. But when you're sick, you are earnestly praying to get well. Uh, amen? Your prayer is a little bit different. But unless you, this woman here, she was not at the foot of Jesus for herself. She loved her daughter so much, she considered her sickness, her being possessed by the demon, as the mama being possessed by the demon. Huh? She took that problem as her own. See, see uh, that's how when we pray, we need to man. If, you're, if somebody's going through cancer, you, get, you pray different if you're going through cancer. Huh? You, you ain't going to shuck and jive. You ain't going to fall asleep on them proper prayers. Especially when you know they don't give you six months to live. You're going to get every ounce of prayer out of you. Huh? You ain't going to miss a beat. You'll you pray for two, three hours. But it's amazing we can't pray two or three minutes anymore. Huh? I ain't beating you up. I'm just trying to get real. Huh? She said, Have mercy. On me. Now, could you, would that be your response as this woman was? I believe most of the people in the body of Christ, Lord, I, I didn't travel all this way to see you. Will you please touch me? Well, while I'm here, you, you, you know, my kids need a pair of new shoes. My life's about ready to be shut off. But she said, Lord, have mercy on me. You know, then she went on to say, Angie, she said, she, when she, had, she came, she approached the right person, Jesus himself. 
She cried for mercy, but she approached the right one. She approached the right person, Jesus himself, and cried out for mercy. Just...